could you tell us something about your early experience that you describe in your book, uh, Crimson and Gold, of, of, of being a child and riding up to Knocknafirna, which you can see from Glenstall here? Uh, what I call it is Knockfirna. So I came here uh, to school, and that meant that I left my home, which was right beside Knockfirna. And as I'm a monk here now, I only have to climb to the top of the terrace garden and I get a view of Nokfirna from here, across the valley. And it's almost a mountain, and it was at the very edge of the farm where I grew up. And so we were able to go there uh, every day, nearly. And it's a very beautiful place. But for me, the more sacred place is beside it, just on the edge of it, which is a ring fort. Limerick is a place of great density of ring forts and this is a particularly extraordinary ring fort because it's preserved. Uh, the moat is all there, you have a drawbridge that brings you into the centre and that particular place which is very difficult of access uh, for me is the most sacred place of, of my lifetime and it was almost like uh, a helipad where uh, divine would land and I would be able to uh, be in that presence as it were. So that place has always been a marker for me and I suppose every place in the world is possibly that for somebody but you have to have those people who are guardians of the place, not just keeping the place uh, intact, but also able to extract from it uh, the honey that is the invisible uh, energy that's in all of nature. So how did you get from being a child on Nakfirna, which is the hill of truth, right, yeah. to Glenstall? What's the connection? The connection was that uh, Glenstall was a school nearest to that place, as it were. And uh, I came here as a boy at the age of 12. And this place is also very sacred. Now, it wasn't the monks that made it sacred. It has been sacred from the Ice Age. And also because the family that actually built the castle here, the Barringtons, they were very aware of beauty and they built the castle on this promontory so that you could see the Galti Mountains from each of the windows of the castle. So they, they were aware and they were capable architecturally and also uh, in terms of woods and gardens of making the place a certain kind of paradise. Everything here is beautiful and that's their doing. Now, we came to inherit this place as monks because of the great tragedy, which was that their daughter was uh, shot by the uh, freedom fighters in the 1920s. And that was a great tragedy for their family, obviously. But it was the reason why uh, the monks were invited to come and take over the place. So there's almost um, a sacred history that incorporates all the tragedies for individual people but turns them into um, another kind of story, a narrative, which is almost writing straight with crooked lines. And the, so the monks now have the uh, great honor and privilege of being guardians. They don't own this place, of course, but they're guardians of the sacredness of the place. And people who come here are aware of that. They, they, it's not just a tourist spot, it's uh, a sacred spot. But the whole place itself provides people with a breathing space almost. You breathe the reality of who you are at the most fundamental part of yourself. And is there a sense of the Christian being sort of, how shall I put it, couched or nested in the pre-Christian, in sort of something? 
Well, I think okay. more than couched or nested in, uh, it was a growth. I mean, there are seven billion people, we're told, in the world today. And that means there are seven billion ways of reaching God. So the pre-Christian uh, Ireland was a very religious place and people were very aware of God, even the whole language of Irish uh, is God bespattered and so I would say that everything was a preparation for just like the Jewish um, testament is showing how all of it leads to a, an accomplishment leads to uh, a fulfillment and I would say all that is true for here, that the, the very long history of the Ice Age and everything else was a way in which this place was sculpted so that it would become the most perfect chalice for the reality which we're celebrating. Because when you were a child mm. uh, on your horse going to Napfirna, the, 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 the spirit of that place was not explicitly Christian when I mean, you ended up in a monastery across the valley I mean would you have come here if it was a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Jewish synagogue I mean no I, I, first of all my connection with God had nothing to do with the Catholic Church when I was nine eight seven years of age so it was a connection with the divine but Ireland was a Catholic country where the, everything, the culture of it, was Catholic. I mean, I'd never heard of Buddhists or there was no question uh, of any other culture uh, permeating a child. And we all had a Catholicism which we learned of. So the Catholic uh, version of how to reach heaven and how to connect with God was the idiom that I was brought up with. And I had the great privilege of studying that theology for 14 years, basically speaking, and of being able to make it connect with what I had uh, actually experienced personally as a connection with the divine. So there was no great uh, abyss between the two, as it were, they, they very uh, beautifully came together in a way which for many people it, it never happened for them because they never grew out of the childish version that they had, whereas I was able to, um, to make that happen. I have great time for some of the early Irish philosophers. I mean, my favorite of those is Erigena, who was the Irish man, and he had a marvelous uh, view about nature and about God in nature, uh, the running God. And he, he would encapsulate what I think uh, is really Celtic spirituality or Celtic theology that we're not pantheists, as we're sometimes accused of being, but we're panentheists. We believe that God is in all creation and that it's up to us uh, to find that signature in all the things around us. Yes, the springtime did need you. Many stars demanded that you sense them. A wave long since gone by lifted itself towards you. Or when you passed a window that was open, a violin gave itself up. All this was charge. But did you complete it? Earth is it not this that you want? 
invisibly to arise in us. Is it not your dream to become one day invisible? Earth invisible. What do you charge us with if not transformation? Earth, my love, I will. Oh, believe me, further springtimes are not required to win me. On my word, a single one, a single May is too much for my blood. I have been your tongue-tied subject for too many years.